In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this abstract sci-fi alien material in Blender. So a few days ago, I was playing around with the procedural nodes and trying to create something cool, and I came up with this cool material, and I thought it was pretty interesting, so I thought I'd make a video on it. And if you'd like to purchase the project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, links in the description. You can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials, and that's a great way to help support this channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist to watch all of my procedural tutorials. And then also before we start, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Blender Grid. Blender Grid is an easy to use render firm specifically designed for Blender. I've used the service and I highly recommend it. Upload your Blender file or a zip file with the blend file and textures. You can change the render settings on the website before rendering. Blender Grid will let you know the cost before you start the render. You can even choose when you want the render to finish if you're on a tight deadline. While it renders, you can check the rendered frames to make sure everything is rendering properly. Once it finishes, just download the files and compile the frames in a video editor. Use the link in the description to get $20 of render credit on your first render. Now I will be using the displacements in the node editor to kind of give that wavy effect on the material. So if you want to use the node editor displacements, you will need to use the cycles rendering engine because the displacements is not supported in Eevee. So let me show you what I have set up in the 3D scene if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So I pressed Shift A, I went here to Mesh, and I added an Icosphere. And then right after you add the Icosphere, right behind me, there's going to be a little Add Icosphere setting. You can just click on the arrow to open that up. And I'm going to set the subdivisions to 6, and that way it is a nice smooth round sphere, and it's pretty detailed. And I want a pretty detailed mesh so that the displacements have more geometry to work with. And then using the object context menu, you can shade the object smooth. Now I want to scale this object to about the real life size in Blender. And the default cube and the other default objects are roughly the size of an average human. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, press the A key to make sure everything is selected. And I'm going to scale this in edit mode, and then I can type in 0.3 and enter. So this way the object is much smaller, so maybe now it's roughly the size of a beach ball. I'm not trying to get the size perfectly accurate, but just close closer to the real life scale in Blender. And I can tab to go back to object mode. And then I also added a camera and I pointed the camera at the icosphere. And then also right over here on the camera settings, I turned the focal length up to 110, just so that everything looks a bit more flat and zoomed in. Now for the lighting, if you go over here to the world properties, I added in this Skylit Garage 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, links in the description if you'd like to download it. So if I hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. This is just going to give us some nice lighting to light up the sphere. And then I did also add three area lights. So if you press shift A, you can go to light and add an area light. And so the first area light is just kind of pointed down at the sphere. And I set this to kind of like a bluish color and the power to 70. And then the second area light I have coming from this side. And for this one, I turned the shape to rectangle and made it kind of a rectangular shape. I also turned the power up to 150 and made it a slight blue color. And then right over here I have another one and this is a much longer one and this one I set the power to 350 and I made the color kind of a reddish pinkish color. And then if you want to make the background transparent like I have then you can go right here to the render properties and if you open up the film tab you can check mark the transparent button and this way you won't be able to see the HDRI in the background so it won't be quite as distracting. And then also right down here on the color management I use the view transform of filmic and I set the look here to very high contrast and this will pop out the colors and make everything more saturated. So now let's click right over here on the shading tab to go to the shading workspace. I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can preview that. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and you can open up the preferences. And then over there in the add-ons tab, you can just search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. And I'll show you how to use it in the video. So you can just select the object and then you can click on new to add a new material. So to start off, I'll press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a magic texture. Let's stick the magic texture right here, and then I can hold down the Control and Shift key and select different nodes, and that is using the feature the Node Wrangler. So when you Control, Shift, and select different nodes, it'll preview the node on the object. So I'll just Control, Shift, and select the magic texture. Now you can change the depth, and that's going to change the magic texture. I am going to use a depth of 3. I think that looks pretty cool, but you can change 
change this to your liking. And then also on the scale here, I'm just going to turn that up to like an 8. And then also with the magic texture selected, I'm going to press Ctrl T, and that is going to use the texture coordinate and mapping, but I don't need the mapping, so I can select the mapping and press X to delete it. And then let's put the object into the vector, and the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. So now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of distortion to the magic texture to make it a bit more noisy. So I can press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a noise texture, and let's actually stick the noise texture in between the texture coordinate and the magic texture, and so this way the noise texture is going to distort the placement of the magic texture, because it's going through the vector. And then also let's change some of the settings on the noise texture, so I want to turn the scale to 15, and also I want to turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 as well. And then I do want a bit more roughness, so I will turn the roughness to a 0.55. And then I do think it would be cool to add some distortion, so I'm just going to turn the distortion to 1. Now it's distorting the magic texture way too much, and so I want the noise texture effect to be less strong. So to do that, I can press Shift A, and let's go to the search, and I can search for the mix RGB, and let's drop the mix RGB in between the two textures. And then I want to drag the noise texture down, and so I want to mix the original object coordinates with the noise texture. So I can take the object here, and I'm going to put that into color 1, and then this noise texture can be going into color 2. So now if I drag the factor, if the factor is all the way to 0, it's just using the object coordinates, but then as I turn the factor up, it's going to use more and more the noise texture, and so it's going to distort the magic texture more and more. Now you can see that the texture is being moved around a lot, so to make it so it's not being moved around so much, I'm going to click on the mix here, and I'm going to change this to the linear light. And now we can just see the effect of the distortion much better. Now I do want this effect to be very subtle, so I'm going to turn the factor to just a 0.01 so it is much more subtle. But if you zoom in there, you can see there's lots of noise on the edges. So now, right back over here on the magic texture, I can put the color into the base color of the principled shader, and then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now I want this material to be metallic, so let's turn the metallic value all the way to one, and now it looks more like metal. And then also to make it a bit more shiny for now, we can just turn the roughness down a bit. Now I also want to change the colors. You could leave the colors how they are if you like, but I want to change the colors a bit. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the color ramp, and let's put the color ramp between the magic texture and the principled shader. So I can now add colors here on the color ramp, and that'll change the magic texture colors. So I'm first going to drag the black tab out a bit so it's a bit more contrasty, and then for this color, I'm going to make it very bright, and I'm going to make it like a red color. And the hex value that I'll be using for this color is FF. 4B35. So you can punch that into the hex value if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using. Let's also drag this out to make the white a bit more contrasty. And then for this color, I think that a nice light blue looks pretty good. And this color will be a hex value of 529E. FF. And then I do also want to add a little bit of pink or purple, so I'm going to hold down the control key and then click here in the center and that'll add another tab. And then this one I'm going to make a little bit more pink. And this color will be a hex value of C17A FF. So now we have some pretty cool colors. Now I also want to put this into the normal to give it some bump because right now the object is very smooth. So let's take the color and I'm going to put that into the normal. Now we need to convert this to normal data because this is a yellow dot here. This is color data, but then this purple dot here, this is normal data. So we need to convert the color data to normal data. So let's press Shift A. I can go to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node. And we just want to put the bump node in between the color ramp and the normal. And then to properly convert it to normal data, we want the color to be going into the height value. And now it actually looks like it is bumping out. And then also where those little circles are, they look like they're pushing back in. And then that is a bit too strong. So I'm just going to turn the strength down to like a 0.5. I think that will look much better. Now the next texture that I want to add is a texture that we're going to put into the roughness so that some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. So I'm actually going to select this noise texture here, and then I'm going to press Control shift d So Control shift d will duplicate the node, but it'll keep the wire plugged up so that we're still using the object from the texture coordinate. And then I can also Control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Now I want to change some of the settings, so let's turn the scale up to like a 20, and then I want to turn the roughness 
back to the default of 0.5 and the detail I will leave at 15. And also I want even more distortion so I'm going to turn the distortion up to a value of 2. So I now want these lighter and darker values to control how rough and shiny the material is. So I can take the noise texture factor and let's put that into the roughness. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. So now some parts are more rough and other parts are more shiny. But I want everything to be a bit more shiny so I want to control these values better. So I can click on this color ramp and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate this color ramp and then let's stick it in between the noise texture and the roughness. And then I can hit the backspace with the color ramp selected and that's just going to reset the color ramp. So if you make the colors darker it's going to make everything more reflective. So if I click on this white tab here I can click on the color and I can turn this down and you can see it'll be much more shiny. So I'm going to use a hex value of D4, D4, D4. So it's basically just a very light gray and so now you can see that the material looks pretty shiny. So now I want to create the texture which is going to be used for the displacement. So to do that I can press shift A and let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the wave texture and let's put the wave texture right here underneath the noise and then I can control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. And also let's take the object here and I can put the object into the vector so it's placed more evenly. And then I'm going to click on the X right here and I'm going to change this to diagonal and that way the wave texture lines will be rotated differently. And then what you can do if you want to change where the lines are is you can double tap the R key and that will activate the trackball rotation and I can just kind of rotate this around and kind of get it to wherever I want. So I want to bring this down and place it about there. I kind of like that the lines are going up but then you can kind of see uh, that top part right there. So I think that is pretty cool. Now I want to turn the scale down to make there be less of those lines. So I'm going to turn the scale to a 2.7. I think 2.7 is pretty good. And then also I want to turn the distortion up and that's going to make the lines kind of wobbly. So I will turn the distortion to a 4.3. And also let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 so it is very noisy along the edges. So I now want to put this wave texture into the normal to give it some bump and I also want to put it into the displacement to actually make it popping out. So what I'm going to do is click on this bump node right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and let's stick it down here. And then the normal from this bump can go into the normal of the next bump. So now that the normal is going through the normal, we now have this height value that we can add more data into. So let's take the color of the wave texture and I'm going to put that into the height and then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now it's a bit too strong right now so if I go to the bump I just want to turn this bump strength to a 0.1 and then I also want to put this wave texture into the displacement so that it actually displaces the mesh. So let's take the wave texture color I can bring out a wire here and I want to put this into the displacement of the material output and then just like we did here for the normal we need to convert this color data into displacement data that the material output can use. So I can press shift A, let's go here to the search, and I can search for the displacement node, and let's put the displacement node here in the wire before it goes into the displacement. And I can drag the displacement down here underneath the principal shader. And then to actually convert it to displacement data, we want the wave texture color to actually be going into the height value of the displacement. So now you can see it does kind of look like it's popping out, but it isn't actually displacing the mesh at all. You can see the sides here are actually smooth. And that is because we need to tell the material to use the displacements. So if you open up the side panel, you do need to make sure you're using cycles rendered if you want to use the material displacements. And then if you click right down here on the material properties, I'm going to close these tabs here and I'm going to open up the settings tab. And here under surface, there is a displacement. And right now it's set to bump only, but we want to change this to displacement and bump. And so this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. So I can just make this smaller. So now you can see that it's actually displacing the mesh and that actually does look pretty cool. It almost looks like an alien mushroom or something like that, but uh, it is way too strong. So I want to make it less strong. So right here on the scale, for now, I'm just going to turn this way down to like a 0.1. And actually, I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.02 for now. So now if you zoom in here, you can see that it is actually displacing the mesh. Now I want to have more control over the shapes of those waves. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the RGB curves. And I want to put the RGB curves in between the displacement and the wave texture. And I can drag it back. 
And then I want the RGB curves to also be controlling the bump for the waves. So let's put the RGB curves color into the height value of the bump and just replace it for the wave texture color. So now I can change the RGB curves and that'll actually change the shape of those waves. So I'm first gonna click here in the center to add a dot and I'm gonna bring it down. And then this dot here, I can drag this way down to the bottom. So you can see now it's actually affecting the shape of that. So I'm gonna drag this down, bring it to about there. And then I wanna click here to add another dot and I'm gonna drag this one down a bit. And then I do also wanna bring up these dots here on both sides and that way the crevices won't be quite as sharp. And then I can also click here to add another tab and let's drag this down there and maybe bring this up a little bit. And this shape is gonna be the same shape as those bumps. So now that we've edited the shape with the RGB curves, it isn't very strong. So I'm gonna go back here to the displacement and I'm gonna turn the displacement strength up to just like a 0.04. So you can turn the scale to a 0.04 or change it to whatever scale that you want. So there we go, there's the abstract alien material. Now there is just a few settings that I wanted to go over if you wanna change the material and make it look different. So right here on the magic texture, you can change the depth and you can see just by changing the depth, you can get a bunch of different variations. So I think a depth value of eight actually looks pretty cool, but I will leave this at 0.3. You can also change the scale and that's gonna change the size of those dots. And then you can also turn this distortion value up if you wanna make it much more detailed. And of course you could also change the color ramp colors to change the colors of it. Now also right here on this mix RGB, the linear light, you could turn this factor up and that's going to distort the magic texture more and more. And so if you want it to be very detailed, you could turn that up. You could also change the scale of the wave texture if you want there to be much more waves or less waves. And you could also change the distortion. So if you want those waves to be much more random, you could like turn this distortion way up and that looks pretty cool as well. So thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the material, you can get that on my Gumroad and my Patreon with the links in the description. You can also purchase more of my materials by checking out my Blender procedural material packs and to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.